Welcome, I'm your host, Logan23. You're joining me for All the Wrong Reasons, Chapter 17. The jail cell is cold, and you sit stunned, staring at the bars, trying to figure out where it all went wrong. How could my own mother have thrown me in jail? She's always been distant, even when I was the only one that remembered Mother's Day when I was eight. At most, I'd get a tepid hug or a kiss on the cheek. Mom always had kisses and hugs and laughter for Kim, but I can't remember being very young and reading to me and singing songs. What did I do? What in the hell did I do to make her stop loving me? <clears throat> I've worked all my damn life for approval, and where does it get me? Locked up. You sit in the cell for a couple hours. Your father is working to get you out, but your mother refuses to drop the charges of assault. I'm pretty sure that she and Kim are going to try for attempted homicide. That's the thing is, your mother um, can't drop the charges. Only your sister can drop the charges. At least in America. I don't know how it works in other countries. I'm pretty sure that... Okay. Finally, your name is called and you're let out of your cell. Someone has posted bail, even though your mother still insists on pressing charges. You find your family, Yon and Jill in the front office of the police station. Jan and Jill are talking to an officer, and your father looks dejected. When he sees you, the sadness turns to guilt. Your mother sees you and points. Her face is in a mask of rage. What is she doing here? Why is she out? She posted bail, Marina. Bail? We didn't post bail. Henry, did you let this monster out of jail? No, but I am begging you to shut up and stop this right now. Your mother turns on you and starts screaming into your face. How dare you hurt my little baby like that, you ungrateful snake. I raised you, shared my home with you, and this is how you repay my kindness? Your mother raises her hand and slaps you across the fa- In a police station! Hello? Anyone? Okay! Your mother raises her hand and slaps you across the face. You don't defend yourself and stagger under the blow. Slap. Shocked by the slap, I... I mean, why would you laugh? Why would you laugh, though? I don't understand, though. With the tears flow. This day has been all too much for you to begin bear, and you begin bursting into ugly cho cho choking sobs. How could you do this to me? Aren't mothers supposed to love their daughters? You are no daughter of mine! Shut up, Marina! Adrian, would you like to press charges? I wouldn't blame you if you did! I would, actually! What?! No. But I hope that I uh, never have to lay eyes on her again. I am done with this family. I'm sorry, Daddy. I tried so hard. Warm arms wrap around you and pull you into a comforting embrace. You look up into a pair of familiar green eyes. They're filled with something you haven't seen in them before. Fury. Jin, what are you doing here? Are you all right? You nod and rub at the stinging of your cheek. Your mother can pack a wallop. Jin turns to your parents and points his finger at your mother. You touch her again, you will find yourself in a sorry-ass lawsuit. And then I will make sure you never will be able to practice medicine again. Is this the rich boyfriend you were talking about? No, it's a different guy. What a slut! Unfortunately for Kim, Jin heard that. He takes a threatening step towards her, and you grab his hand. Oh, Kim... You should have kept your mouth shut. Adrian has only ever had two boyfriends, one of which she never saw. Is that your definition of a slut? Or is it the pretend goody two-shoes that lost her virginity at the age of 13 to do to her college neighbor, Danny? Then you went on to sleep with the entire football team in high school, including the married coach. Oh my god! What?! Jen, I love you! <laughs> oh my god. I love you, dude. I love you. That means a lot right now. That means a lot. Your mother gasps and clutches at her throat. Behind you, both Jan and Jill snicker. 
If only I were done. But it continues. Bar hopping every weekend in med school, waking up with strangers in the morning, sleeping with the university professors for grades, and someone higher up to ensure a graduation. Ladies who give live in glass houses shouldn't cast stones. Damn. I don't even want to say anything. Can we close the book right now? Can we just... Damn. I can't believe what I'm hearing. I... Show her some mercy. Jen. Squeeze his hand gently, signaling him to stop his angry... Deatrib. She hasn't been the best sister. Actually, she's been the worst, but humiliating her isn't going to fix anything. It will make me feel better. But I'll just feel sorry for her. What I really want, more than anything, is just to get out of here. You're letting her off too light. Look at who she has as an example growing up, Jen. Maybe there's some hope for her, you know? I think you're giving her too much credit. Oh, Lord, yes. I definitely want to hear more. Maybe you can email the... <laughs> Jill, I love you, too. Maybe you can email me the details, Jen. Your best friend gives your brother a saucy wink and shake your head in exasperation. Guys, that's enough. Tears of embarrassment slip down Kim's face, and then you do feel bad. Troy and his family have heard it all. How dare you spread these dirty lies about my daughter! I will sue you for defamation! They weren't lies, were they, Miss Miller? Jen gives Kim a knowing look, and she shakes her head subtly. Who are you, anyway? What are you even doing here? You notice your father staring at Jen, like he's seen a ghost, and you frown in confusion. My name is Jin. Jin Adrian Stark. Your father turns beet red and jokes. And also, your brother Adrian. What? How can you be my brother? Are you Kim's brother too? No, just yours. I I don't under I don't understand. Jin turns your father, giving him an angry look. You should have told her a long time ago. Now it's my turn to tell her the truth. What truth? What are you talking about? Adrian. Your father's real name was Henry Dennison. When you were two years old, he changed his name to Henry Miller, and with the help of Marina Miller, of course, the lady you thought was your mother. I can't believe this, Daddy. My whole life has been a lie. That is this true? My whole life has been a lie? Adrian. Jin hugs you close in comfort. You finally break down as a flood of pent-up sorrow fills you. Wow. Wow. So mommy's not really your mommy, because Kim is not really your sister. Jin, instead of being a boyfriend, <laughs> is your brother, and your father has lied to you your entire life. Holy... And I thought I had problems. All right, never mind. No, nah, my problems are completely different, but... Whew! Okay! Thank God I have you, Jen. Thank God. This has been a horrible experience, but at least it's given me a new brother. He has been nothing but wonderful to me since the day we met. You break from Jen's embrace and face your father again. You have to know the rest. Why? Because I didn't want your real mother to take you away from me. My real mother? You look to a marina who is smirking evilly at you. The bottom of your stomach drops out. Why are you smirking? Oh my god, the words that want to slip out of my mouth right now. Our mother, Adrian. Our mother was raised in the States, where she met your dad and had you. But she didn't tell him who she was in France. A Harris of a hotel tycoon. Let me guess. Your mother is my mother. Oh! <gasps> I'm in a her, her father had arranged her to be married to a business ally. Your parents separated, and afterwards, our mother found out that her father was suffering from cancer. 
It was considered terminal. When Mom went back to France, she kept her existing family from him to spare him the pain. But she told my dad about you, and he accepted to marry her nevertheless. Mom made arrangements for Henry to keep you until after their wedding. He agreed that she would have custody of you because she'd be in a better position to take care of you. However, when she came back to the States for you, Henry had taken you and disappeared. She'd been searching for you for 23 years. You can't stop staring at your father, who is openly crying now. This entire situation seems unreal. Adrian, you've been heartbroken for as long as I've been alive, because she lost you. Daddy, how could you? He let you think all this time that you were unworthy of love because this woman and her daughter have treated you horribly. I didn't. His protests are half-hearted. He knew how you were being treated, and... but yet he, he stood by and watched most of it. If you had let her live with us, she would have been cherished and adored, but you denied her that. And now we're here, and you should be ashamed, sir. I'm afraid of losing you, baby. I'm, I'm so sorry. Mother... You have already lost her. If that was me, mm -mm, turn on the hill. Let's go, Jen. Your father turns back to Marina with a furious glare. We had a deal, Marina. I father your daughter and in return you place replace Adrian's mother, giving your mother the love she needed. But you never loved her. <laughs> How could I love her? Every time I looked at your daughter, all I see is her, Ariana Blanc, the love of your life. First you left her for me, left me for her, then you, she left you. You came back, but not fully. You never stopped loving her. You never stopped comparing her, me to her. So how could you expect me to love her daughter the way you love me, or my own? She reminds me of how you cheated on me with m her mother. You stared in an open mouth shock at the woman you thought was your mother. She just confirmed that you always suspected. I only have one thing to say. All I wanted was your love. I truly loved you. I was content just to have a little bit of the love you gave Kim. All my life I've been asking myself why you couldn't love us equally. But for you to blame me, a child, a baby even, for the sins of my father, is an abominable. I truly believe there was something wrong with me. But all this time you were simply taking your own petty jealousy on me. You should be ashamed of yourself. Your mother, no. Marina, doesn't say anything, she just gives you a contemptuous glare. You turn back on your... You turn your back on your family and face, Jim. Have you known all this time? No, I suspected it when I first saw you. After we had dinner together, I ran your glass to get a DNA test done. I just got the results back. I'm sorry that I didn't get to you before you had to go through all of this. I would not purposely have caused you any kind of pain. Thank you for that. Adrian, baby, I'm I'm so sorry I should have... No, you shut your goddamn mouth. I'm not sure what I have to say to you right now. I guess my biggest question is, how could you just stand there all these years and watch what she's done to me and do nothing? Your father opens his mouth to answer and then closes it. He doesn't have a good enough reason. You both know that it was because he was weak. I'm done here. Adrian, I'd like to bring you to Paris with me. Now tonight. Mom has waited to see you half of her life, and I don't want her or you to wait another minute. Will you come with me? I would love to meet my mother. Jan, Jill, I'm taking Adrian to Paris tonight. Would you like to join us? Lord, I thought you'd never ask. I'm in, and Jill's in too. <laughs> Screw work! We're in this <laughs> we're in this real life so popper together, let's go. What he said You leave the police station and everyone in it without a backwards glance. Meanwhile in Chicago, now playing as Justin. Hmm. The prodigal son returns. You're drunk and not in the mood for your cousin's shenanigans. If you weren't so drunk you'd climb the twenty steps and toss him over the edge. Piss off, George. Jean and Ian join in on the mini-family reunion. Jean gives you a friendly punch in the shoulder and then watches as you stumble to your father's study. Hey, Jay! What's it worth? 
I like her. <sighs> Me too. Granted, I came... I became a fan the moment she slammed the door in your face. It's no wonder she's crazy about you. You nod to your cousins. You appreciate their support, especially now. You don't know what Adrian was thinking, giving you this freedom. You certainly didn't want it. She just did the exact opposite of what she was hoping to do. By putting my relationship with my family first, she made me realize that she's the only girl I want. God, let me fix this. I could use a miracle right now. You open the door to your father's study and find him at his desk. It's surprising to see an older version of you, and you briefly wonder if this is what you'll look like years from now. Where's Mom? She's still in the hospital. I'll take you to her after uh, I finish this paperwork. How is she? She's hurt, son. Her heart has been broken over this entire situation. Yeah, my heart's been broken too, Dad. I mean, um, how can I make this right? <clears throat> Son, your father crosses the room and puts a solid hand on your shoulder. I'm sorry that I had to kick you out, but I'm glad that you're here now. This is a good start. Your, fa your mother has taken this very hard. She's still in the hospital, and I'll take you there shortly. Well, I'm here to appease the family, so you tell me what to do. Make your way to the side table and pour yourself another drink. They got you off on the plane, and your only goal right now is to get as drunk enough to get through this day. It smells like you've had enough, Justin. There is not enough alcohol in the world right now to be enough. Well, still, thank you for coming. Don't thank me. If it had been up to me, I would still be in Manhattan. Thank Adrian. She begged me to come here back here because she didn't want me to ruin my relationship with my family. If she hadn't set me free, yeah. So, are you we going to the hospital or not? I think you're forgetting yourself, son. I taught you to show better respect than that. Oh! Dad, I'm hurting you. How would you like to feel if you opposites? Okay. Mm, yeah, opposites reverse. <clears throat> excuse me. I'm not disrespecting you, but I hope you excuse my less than gallant demeanor today, Dad. I uh, happen to be a little heartbroken. The love of my life asked me, no beg me, to leave her so I can come back to you. I'm sure you remember what a heartbreak feels like. Or maybe you don't. Maybe you've woken up to love of your life for the last 28 years. Do you really want to take that tone with me? I think I do. This is hellishly unfair. How would you feel if you were in my shoes? Oh, son, when I was in your place, before I met your mother, I was exactly like this. I didn't understand why my parents forced me to marry somebody I hadn't met either. I understand the business arrangement, but at this point, I too asked why was I the only one to need to sacrifice for the family. Then we had more than we needed. I couldn't understand why we wanted more. In the end, I could not thank them enough. Your mother is a wonderful woman. So is Adrian. We wanted to make sure you marry well. That the woman you marry is... Marrying you not for your money or your privilege. You realize how hypocritical that is, right? If I weren't just an Adams, whoever would have chosen would have been in this arrangement. This conversation is pointless, you're drunk. Get used to it. This is the state I'm going to be in for the rest of my life. Swear to... One more disrespectful word out of you, Justin. Sir, yes, sir. I'll take my way to the... I'll make my way to the car. I don't think I should be driving, so I'll wait for you there. You stagger out of your father's study and run into Ian in the hallway. I'm sorry, Justin. I'm... I'm so sorry. Don't be sorry for me just yet, Ian. Be sorry for the girl whose fate is being forcibly tied to mine. Justin, what do you mean? Just wait, Ian. I would die first before I marry some other woman other than Adrian. They will disown you. They already did, and yet here I am, more miserable than ever. If you need help, you know you can count on us, right? I know, and I think this time I might be on my own. Justin, don't worry about your mom. Just a few minor cuts and bruises, okay? You understand, 
what she's not saying, that your mother isn't in critical condition, that this was very likely a stunt to get you back home. Oh, look at that. Ooh, so it wasn't really an accident. Hmm. Oh, we discussed this in the last chapter, didn't we? <clears throat> you and your mother, or your father, drive to the hospital in silence. You make your way to your mother's room. When she sees you, she starts crying. Oh, Justin, you're here. I thought I was never going to see you again. You go to her bed, give her a gentle hug. Ian was right. She's only got a scratch. You feel manipulated. Oh my god, Mom. Are you really hurt? Just tell me the truth. Are you really hurt? Were you really in an accident, or was this a ruse to get me home? Justin! No, Jack, it's okay. Yes, darling, I was really in an accident, and I've... I've been heartbroken since you moved out. You mean since you disin... disinherited me. Wait, what? You mean since you... That should have been what my guy was saying, and not Jack. We were only looking out for your best interests. You got a broken son instead. Your mother squeezes your hand. You will see this all worked out for the best. You and your dad leave your mother with promises to see her again soon. You head back home and take a nap and a shower. Later after dinner, you and your dad are sharing a drink. How do you know you're not going to fall in love with her? Betrothed. Because I only have one heart and it's no longer mine to give away. You think about Adrian, your last moments together. You know that it's going to take some craftiness to get your parents on your side. But she's worth it. We've always thought we were doing what was best for you. I know we keep saying that, but it's true. I did too. Then I met her, and I realized that my love, my loyalty, allegiance, my soul, wasn't yours to promise to some girl you see fit to hand me off to. The choice must be up to me, because I am going to be the one to decide whether I will be happy or miserable for the rest of my life. You cannot choose my happiness for me, Dad. Justin, to back out of this late on the, this late on the agreement would destroy the friendships we've built for generations. Her grandfather and yours were like brothers. So you'd rather destroy my life? Oh, of course not. That was never our intention. You don't respond. You just take another sip of your whiskey and stare out the window. Your mother hopes to have a wedding in two months. Oh, then she's going to be disappointed. You can't compel me to marry this girl, who I haven't even met yet, in under three months. Justin. Dad, Adrian, and I were practically living together. And I'm sure it's no surprise to you to say that, well, we've slept together. If we're going to arrange this marriage, I have to at least make sure that Adrian isn't pregnant. Because if she is, I won't care if you disown me, erase me, or any trace of me from this family. I will not make my own child a bastard. I'm not even... And I'm sure even you would understand that. Fair enough. But in return, I want you to do something for us. Really? Haven't you already asked me to hand my life uh, to a woman I've never met? I want you to court this girl. Get to know her. Get her to fall in love with you. Build a bond. Take one year. That's how we usually do it. You and your year. How about that? How do I respond to my dad? I don't know. I guess I could try. It feels like it's going to kill me, but I guess I could try. Son, that's all I ask for. You might find that it isn't so bad. It feels bad right now. I know. Seems unfair right now, but I'll tell you what. If your betrothed doesn't fall in love with you, doesn't have any affection after a year, you're free. Hmm. Good. I can be the most pompous asshole in the world. You want to punch something. This isn't going the way you hope, but why can't they just see that Adrian is the one for you? They just don't know her. I think I've given you a fair bargain. Let me think on it, Dad. You leave your father alone in his study. One year is too long. Hell, one month is too long. You start to formulate a plan. One month. It seems too short to make somebody fall in love, but not too long to do the opposite. You pull out your phone and send a text to your real fiancé. Where will you be in exactly 40 days? 
Let me answer that for you. In Italy, changing your last name to mine. <laughs> okay! Alright, just... Boom! We were getting married in 40 days. Um... Like I said in the last chapter, I have gone through... We're of no means. My family rich at all. That's a joke. Um, <clears throat> but I've gone through the same, not arranged marriage, but I'm talking about faking, um, injury, or sickness, or disease, to gain sympathy, or gain, oh, here, let me run back to my family, and it gets to the point where, um, I live by a saying, screw me over once, shame on, shame on you, screw me over twice, shame on me, um, I live by that saying, so after a couple times, I finally was like, no, no. And if you listen to the last chapter at the end, um, the last five minutes, I went over something that happened in my life. And, um, yeah. Mm -mm. No, no. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, with that being said, I hope y'all did enjoy the video. Please feel free to like, comment, share, subscribe. Head down in the description below. We do have a Discord server. You can hang out with me and other members of the YouTube community. As well as, there's some links to social media and a few links to support me and my content. Otherwise, stay well, stay awesome. Thanks for watching, and have a good one. Peace.